the Fallschirmjäger were the paratrooper branch of the German Air Force before and during World War II. They were the first paratroopers to be committed in large-scale airborne operations. On the 10th of May 1940, the Fallschirmjäger performed a successful glider raid on the powerful fortification known as Eben Amal, which consisted of multiple gun emplacements and was defended by 1,200 Belgian troops. The German airborne troops attacked the artillery casements and pillboxes with demolition charges and hollow charge grenades. The mission was accomplished by only 85 German soldiers and the airborne troops took control of the fort after a few hours of fighting. This famous raid overshadowed a much larger and much more complex operation on the same day during the invasion of the Netherlands in which over 2,000 paratroopers were deployed and approximately 12,000 troops of the 22nd Luftlande or Air Landing Division also participated. The German paratroopers planned to capture and secure the three airfields around the Dutch capital Ippenburg, Oppenburg and Valkenburg. Then, in the second wave, the regiments of the 22nd Luftlande Division would land on these airfields in Junkers GU-52 transport planes and they would take The Hague and capture the Dutch Queen and government. Finally, the whole German airborne force would link up with the Panzer spearheads. A very similar concept like the famous Allied Operation Market Garden in September of 1944. It was expected that Henry Winkelmann, the commander-in-chief of the Dutch army, might then agree to surrender within 24 hours. As planned, the Luftwaffe flew over the Netherlands in the early morning hours of the 10th of May. German airplanes flew directly to The Hague and, at 4 a.m., bombed the new Alexander Army Barracks and the airfield at Ippenburg. Immediately thereafter, transport planes began dropping paratroopers in several waves onto the field and its surroundings. But Dutch machine gun fire inflicted casualties at scattered their landings. Many planes were forced to land damaged or destroyed by the defenders, which blocked further arrivals. German troops attacked and occupied the airfield's main building and raised the German flag to signal victory. However, the Dutch managed to prevent the Germans from advancing beyond Ippenburg and enter the Dutch capital. Around the same time, German troops were dropped at the airstrip in Ockenburg. The defenders were unable to prevent the Germans from taking the airfield, but delayed them long enough to secure the arrival of additional Dutch infantry units, which prevented the Germans from advancing. As the Germans were using the Ockenburg airstrip to strengthen their numbers, the Dutch bomb it to prevent it from being used any further. The Valkenburg airstrip was only partially constructed at the time, but as with Ippenburg, the German troops bombed it and then dropped troops, which caused the defenders heavy casualties. Although following waves of paratroopers also sustained heavy casualties, the defenders were unable to prevent the airstrip from falling into the hands of the German invaders. However, because of its partial construction, the Germans could not take off from it, 
which rendered further transports unable to land. Several skirmishes to liberate occupied positions were fought between small pockets on both sides. The Dutch used artillery support and by the end of the day Dutch forces had retaken the airfields, but the tactical victory was short-lived. On the 14th of May, the bombing of Rotterdam by the Luftwaffe forced General Winkelmann to capitulate. The performance of the paratroopers in the Netherlands was mixed. The 22nd Luftlande Division was forced to land many of its aircraft unexposed motorways because the paratroopers had failed to secure designated airfields. Most aircraft ended up being shot up by Dutch infantry and artillery fire, but the airborne troops were able to cause disruption behind the Dutch lines. The remaining German forces that had escaped from the airfields ended up being scattered over the dunes in the area. Approximately 1,600 German troops were captured, with 1,200 being shipped to the United Kingdom as prisoners of war. The Dutch Queen and government were able to flee to Britain and constitute a government in exile. German material losses include 182 transport aircraft, mostly Junkers Gu-52s. The heavy loss of aircraft was unforeseen, with General Feldmarschall Albert Kesserling stating after the war that the aircraft shortage had been the cause of heavy German casualties at the invasion of Crete. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.